Hi and welcome. Our topic today is healing and repair. The last topic we saw in pathology is inflammation. And inflammation is literally followed by healing. So it's only logical we discuss healing now. Coming to what is healing, healing is defined as body's response to injury in an attempt to restore normal structure and function. Healing is body's response to injury in an attempt to restore normal structure and function. That is the definition of heal. Remember, it is only an attempt to restore. And this attempt includes two processes or involves two processes regeneration and repair. Regeneration involves proliferation of similar type of cells and results in complete restoration structure wise and function wise of the original tissue. So regeneration involves proliferation of similar type of cells resulting in complete restoration of structure and function. Here the attempt is successful, 100% successful. In contrast, in repair, the replacement is by specialized connective tissue. Okay. The defect is replaced by specialized connective tissue leading to fibrosis and scar. Here, the attempt is not 100% successful. That is, the structure and function is not 100% restored. And at times, the attempt involves the mixture of these two processes taking place simultaneously. In order to understand the concept of regeneration and repair, it is essential to understand the cell cycle and the three different types of cells based on the ability to divide. The cell cycle depicted here is defined as the period between two successive cell divisions. The period between two successive cell divisions. This cell cycle is divided into four unequal phases. There is the period between any two successive cell division of a particular cell is divided into four unequal phases. The first is M phase or mitosis phase. It is the phase in which the actual cell division takes place. It is further subdivided into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and all these things you must have learned already in school so let me not uh, go into it we will not discuss that now what we are concerned is what happens after that after the mitosis phase or after a successful cell division the daughter cells soon enter the g1 or gap 1 phase the G1 phase is followed by S phase or synthesis phase where synthesis of nuclear DNA takes place. Synthesis of nuclear DNA for the next division. This S phase is followed by another gap that is gap 2 phase. And in an actively continually dividing cell, this G2 phase is again followed by M phase completing the cycle. But depending upon the ability to continually divide, cells are divided into three types labile cells, stable cells, permanent cells. Labile cells, stable cells, permanent cells. Labile cells are cells which continually divide throughout their life cycle under a normal physiologic condition. 
so labile cells or cells which continually divide and their cell cycle is the one i just described m phase followed by g1 then s then g2 again followed by m examples of such continually dividing labile cells include the surface epithelial cells of epidermis the cells of the epithelium of alimentary tract etc the second type of cell is stable cell these stable cells lose their ability to continually divide after adolescence but they retain their capacity to multiply in response to particular stimuli that is they lose their capacity to continually divide in normal condition after adolescence but when a specific stimuli is there they start redividing again these type of cells are called stable cells and in stable cells after adolescence the m phase is followed by another phase called g0 or gap zero phase and these cells remain in this g0 phase until there is a particular stimuli to redivide and when there is a stimuli to redivide they enter the s phase examples of such cells include the parenchymal cells of organs like liver pancreas kidney etc coming to the third and last type of cells called permanent cells these cells lose their ability to proliferate around the time of birth they lose their ability to continually divide at the time of birth they totally exit the cell cycle or shut down their self cycle after that particular time there is no coming back or reentering the cell cycle examples include neurons of nervous system skeletal muscle cardiac muscle etc there is no regeneration of these cells after cell death the gap is only filled by fibrous tissue there is no regeneration of these cells these cells are permanently lost so we have three types of cells depending upon the ability to divide labile stable and permanent cells and it is the presence of the particular type of cell which decides the process of healing whether it is a regeneration or repair or a combination and if it is a combination at what a ratio coming to the process of regeneration regeneration involves two things one proliferation and migration of cells to fill the gap and number two the differentiation and maturation of these cells to restore the structure and function of the original tissue the process of repair also involves two events one granulation tissue formation and two contraction of wood the events here are slightly different from the events occurring in the process of regeneration and we will see these events in a little bit more detail the first event that is granulation tissue formation involves three phases phase of inflammation phase of clearance and phase of ingrowth of granulation tissue phase of inflammation is the first here soon after trauma the blood clots obviously when there is an injury the first thing happening is blood clot blood clot is followed by acute inflammatory response which we saw in our previous class these happen within first 24 hours what comes next is phase of clearance and in this phase the necrotic tissue and debris are removed by whom or by what by combination of proteolytic enzymes liberated from neutrophils autolytic enzymes from dead tissue cells themselves and phagocytic activity of our scavenger cells that is macrophages 
This clearance phase is followed by phase of ingrowth of granulation tissue. This phase, that is phase of ingrowth of granulation tissue, consists of two main processes. Angiogenesis or neovascularization and fibrogenesis. I think we need to add a little bit more detail about these processes here. Angiogenesis or neovascularization involves formation of new blood vessels at the site of injury. How? By proliferation of endothelial cells from the margins of severed blood vessels, that is, damaged blood vessels. New vessels sprout from parent vessels, that is, cutoff vessels. Initially, they are solid but later canalized. Initially, they are also leaky but later well organized to form organized muscular arterioles, thin walled venules or capillaries. And all these things happen due to the influence of factors like vascular endothelial growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, etc. Now coming to fibrogenesis. Originally, the newly formed blood vessels in angiogenesis are present in an amorphous ground substance or matrix. And in this matrix, now fibroblasts appear. And these fibroblasts contain some features of smooth muscle cells. That is, they contain contractile filaments, actin, myosin. Okay, you must have had. Okay, contractile filaments. And so, they are called myofibroblasts. And these fibroblasts start laying down collagen fibers. The collagen fibers start to appear by about sixth day. These fibroblasts not only lay down collagen fibers, but also form bridges between collagen fibers. These myofibroblasts have surface receptors for fibronectin molecules and by attaching to these receptors they form bridges between different collagen fibers. These fibronectin receptors attached to different collagen fibers thereby forming a bridge and I already told you they contain contractile filaments. So after making the bridge they contract leading to contraction of the wood which is the process which follows the formation of granulation tissue and now as the maturation proceeds the collagen fibers become relatively more than newly formed blood vessels and fibroblasts so comparatively the amount of collagen fibers increase due to continuous deposition of collagen fibers and this results in the formation of a inactive or healed scar. And this process is known as cisatrization. Okay, this forms a general discussion on the process of healing and in our next class we will be discussing in detail the healing of skin wound which is a classic example of heal. As usual, notes are available for download in the description. If you need further help, you can mail me. Until we meet in our next class, thanks for watching. Bye.